What's up, y'all? Welcome back to all of you current and aspiring IT professionals and people of the internet at large. Uh, I'm going to go talk about something in this video, which I think is kind of fun. Um, I oftentimes talk a lot about sort of career uh, and um, IT sort of industry stuff. So in this video, I'm going to, to switch gears a little bit and do a um, uh, sort of a, hopefully an interesting quick little te technical demo uh, where we're going to go jump on a free BSD box, technically TrioS, uh, which is a, a more sort of desktop oriented version of free BSD and um, kind of walk through the, the ports system, which is uh, something I think a lot of people are not familiar with. And it's, um, it's sort of a neat, a uh, little bit antiquated, maybe not the, the, the sort of most common way to go install packages anymore, uh, but it's, it's a package management system that uses make files and just pulls, you know, the, the source directly from the, from the internet and uh, compiles it and sets it up and gets your dependencies and all that good stuff. It was kind of a precursor to uh, a lot of the modern Linux package management stuff that we see today. Um, this goes way back. You know, I think the port system came out in the late nineties, I want to say. So it's, it's been around and, uh, it still works to this day. And it's a, it's a pretty nice system. It's a little bit convoluted. Uh, but if we jump over to my sort of main display, uh, the first thing I want to go point to you guys to is uh, freebsd.org slash doc slash handbook slash ports dash using dot HTML. And this is the FreeBSD handbook and the FreeBSD handbook uh, is phenomenal, right? The, the documentation around FreeBSD has always been sort of a point of pride thing. They've, they've always maintained and had really, really good documentation uh, for FreeBSD. Now, even if you're somebody who's a Linux admin, even if somebody who's going to be using, you know, um, um, Ubuntu or, or, or Red Hat or whatever you want to go use, there's a lot of overlap here. And uh, Linux documentation is no slouch. It's gotten pretty good. Um, if you look at the Ubuntu wiki, or if you go look at the, the Red Hat documentation, which sometimes is, you know, sort of hidden behind a, a paywall kind of thing, which is a little annoying. Uh, but, you know, Arch, for example, which is a, a pretty popular recent distribution, uh, they pride themselves on, on having really good documentation too. So, yeah, uh, this is just another alternative that you guys can go look at in terms of how things work. Now, FreeBSD, if you're not aware it is derived from BSD Unix, which is derived from Unix TM trademark, the official, the original Dennis Ritchie Unix, right? So the, the lineage here is direct from the, from the, the source. These, this is the original stuff that you're, you're running when you're doing free BSD. And, um, you know, that's one of its, its sort of benefits. This is one of the really nice things about free, free BSD is that Linux has been around for quite a while now. Uh, but FreeBSD has had the tires kicked, right? This is, you know, most of the bugs have been found. Um, this is very, very, very stable, very rock solid. And it's an operating system that a lot of people are not as familiar with, because if you look out there, you look in the wild uh, for, for how many people are using BSD. Uh, well, it seems like there aren't that many, um, but really that's not, actually the case. There's actually a lot of people using FreeBSD. They just don't call it FreeBSD. So FreeBSD has a very different licensing uh, model than Linux. They're both open source. They're just sort of different takes on open source. So the, the GNU kind of model is that if you go use this stuff and you make changes to it, you give those changes back, right? That's not the case with BSD. Uh, BSD originally the model was, and they've actually gotten even looser than this. Originally the model, the model was, uh, give us credit. So if you use BSD and you make some changes, note somewhere that these are from BSD and that the, the folks over at, you know, the University of Berkeley get some credit. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, and they've, they've even loosened up now, so you don't even need to really give them credit. You just, just go use it. Um, and you're good. So it's a different kind of model of, of open source, right? So the, the GNU kind of model says, you gotta give it back. And the BSD system says, Hey, this is, this is open. This is free. Do whatever you want with it. If you want to give contrib contributions back to the community, then, then great. By all means, you gotta adhere to the coding standards. 
and it's a much much smaller group uh, of developers who have things like check-in rights like there it's as you know the freebsd kernel is, is is very um well known for for having a very high level of coding standards um so it's not necessarily the wild west the way that that sort of uh, linux is and i'm not knocking linux that's you know those guys can write code better than i can if they're if you're regularly checking into the kernel uh, but the the BSD sort of standards of how things are, you know, you got to meet these certain requirements uh, to be able to go check things in. You know, it needs to be good quality code, documented, adhering to style standards, all that kind of stuff. So BSD has been around for a long time, but a lot of people on the surface think that it's not really all that used and it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but that's not the case. Because of its licensing, it just has a whole bunch of different names. Uh, so Darwin which is the basis of OS X, is basically a port of FreeBSD. So all you OS X people, you're using FreeBSD. If you use a NetApp system or a lot of routers or you know, tons of stuff, um, they all run FreeBSD, but they just call them you know, data on tap or whatever the version of the operating system that that particular vendor makes calls it, right? So. Um, it's an interesting thing to learn and to kind of play with. And it's, it, I, I really like FreeBSD. It's a, it's, it's a very kind of basics, pure OS. Uh, I think <laughs> a lot of the folks who are using things like Arch Linux and they're trying to get really down to the bare bones, um, the, the essentials, the kind of, the, the, the you know, pure kind of, kind of Unix, Linux and philosophy stuff. Um, that's great. You could also just go use BSD because it's kind of already like that from the from the get go. Um, it's not necessarily as as quite aggressive rolling release kind of stuff, but um, but yeah, it's interesting. So we're going to go ahead and look at this. Uh, so the way that you go ahead and use the port system uh, is very straightforward. Um, this is the FreeBSD handbook. You basically do a port snap fetch to go pull down the directory structure. You do an extract, which is going to go you know extract the the port directory. And then you can go do a, a fetch and update. So I'll do the I'll do the the port snap fetch update uh, real quick just to kind of show this to you guys. Um, I already ran the, um, the 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 fetch and the extract, and uh, I don't think it makes sense to go do this on the video just because this can take this can take a few minutes uh, to go ahead and do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and paste that into my my terminal window, um, and it's going to go ahead and basically look for the kind of updates, and it's going to go apply any any patches. So that's that's. Not a lot of stuff in there, but you know, pulled down a couple since the last time I ran that, and you'll be you'll be good to go. So, the uh, the example that they have in here is going to be um, so. Actually, there's two ways to go do it. You can do the the port snap command, which is installed by default, uh, or you can go use subversion to to basically clone it off, which is sort of two different ways to go do it. Um, and then in the ports directories, you're going to go see uh, basically there's it's going to install this into the user ports directory. Uh, so whether you do so this with subversion or you extract it, uh, if we go to cd to slash user uh, ports uh, and we do an ls, you can go ahead and see that we have all of these sort of directories. So you get accessibility and you've got archivers and you've got, you know, base and benchmarks and biology um, and all, you know, sort of different sort of categories. So this is basically just like a directory-based package manager. So instead of, you know, pulling up GNOME Software Center and doing a search in there or doing, you know, a... Uh, a package search uh, tree, let's say for the, the tree command, which we can absolutely go ahead and do. It'll search for that, right? So we can go find the tree command. We could also go ahead and do a find dot dash name tree. And we'll go ahead and see this in the local directory. Um, so it's just gonna go index through all these things. We can go see that, that we've got a directory for a tree. So if I go to CD sysutils tree, and I do a make install, it's gonna go say, do I wanna go install the, the documentation? I'll say yes. Uh, and then it's gonna go pull this down and it's gonna go install it for me. <laughs> That's it. Really, really simple. Uh, it's building this from source right now. Um, so obviously when you're building things from source, it's gonna go take a little bit longer uh, than it would if you were you know, just installing a binary version. And we do have the package command, so you can absolutely install things uh, from source as, you know, binary packages. So PKG, um, and if you do a package help, it'll give you all the kind of commands and ex exactly the same stuff that you would expect uh, with an apt get 
uh, or a zipper or any one of those kind of binary packages. These are all, all here. So you can go see all those kind of things. Uh, but ports is an alternative to it. So one of the things I'll, I would note is that when they give you this sort of example here, they're going to have you install the LSOF utility. And the LSOF utility, um, if you just go run this as it as it's shown here, uh, will complain and it will break. And I'm guessing this is a fairly common thing. Uh, so the idea is uh, that this is going to have a dependency on the kernel sources, right? So it's going to have the, the FreeBSD kernel sources, just like you would have the Linux kernel sources. Uh, LSOF needs to go ahead and have those sources in order to go ahead and include some of the files, right? So um, if you go ahead and run this, normally it blows up, right? Uh, so what I did is I wrote a little script. Uh, let me go to my, my home directory. Uh, so I'm in my home directory. I can't type. <laughs> uh, so I'm doing an ls here. And I just wrote this little script called get source. Uh, and if I do a vim uh, on get source, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, let me go ahead and increase the size of that to make it a little bit more readable. Um, and... So basically all this does, uh, as it goes in and looks at the base URL, right? So the, the, we clone uh, the source from uh, subversion.freebsd.org slash base uh, release ENG uh, for English. Um, and then what I do is I just use a uname-r and I pipe it to, to Perl because I, I don't use that all that often. Um, I like the PCRE regex. And I basically remove the last little bit, which has, has a release or, you know, that kind of thing, um, or unstable. So we pull that down, we build the, the base subversion URL, uh, and then we go ahead and add the um, svn.freebsd.org uh, to ETC hosts, because the way that this sort of works and it kind of blows things up a little bit is um, they have a, a geo load balanced, you know, um, kind of uh, alias, right? So if I go ahead and do um, host svn dot um, freebsd org, you can see that if we do a lookup uh, and it's going to go ahead and say that this is an alias for svnmirror.geo.freebsd.org uh, and that it, this is the IP address for it. So I just I just wrote a little kind of utility that puts a, an entry in the host file. Right, so we, we can go to that host directly uh, as opposed to trying to resolve it. Uh, and then basically what it does is it, it, it clones that down. So I'm not going to go run this. It takes a little while to go ahead and pull it down. But what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go put this on my GitHub. Um, so if you just look at GitHub, uh, and my username is Nicholas Bernstein. So I'll upload this to my, my GitHub a little bit later on. Um, so that'll, that'll sort of fix some things. And then if we go back over here, and actually I should probably make this bigger as well. Um, what we can go do is we can go to... Let's say tree. Oops. So we can go ahead and do a tree on our directories. Let me see what directory I'm in. So we can go see all of our, our directories here and I can do a tree. I think it's just L1, something like that. We can look at the levels. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll do uh, we'll do tree capital L, let's say two, or actually do L one, and we can go ahead and see basically all the uh, kind of the directories and everything that you would have underneath uh, each section uh, that you could go ahead and pull down and build uh, from source, which is you know sort of a nice way to go do things, right? So um, let's say we want to go ahead and use uh, X view, right? We could go ahead and install that. Um, so you know, pretty simple. Um, again, you know, find is nice for this kind of stuff. You can install locate just so you have an updated uh, kind of quicker way to go do it. Um, but that's that's basically it. Um, so if we go ahead and CD X11. Uh, well, we get just we'll just do X11 by itself. Do an LS in here. Uh, let's see the uh, Zenity. And then we can go ahead and do a make dash J4. So we use, you know, multiple CPUs when compiling. And then it's going to go ahead and compile it. 
Um, so, you know, is that doing anything? Maybe not. All right, it guess it doesn't like the, the J4 on there, but it's gonna go ahead and pull it down. It's gonna go ahead and install it. It's gonna go configure it. So that's just sort of a neat little thing that you guys can go ahead and play with. Um, <laughs> occasionally it will do something like this because it's, it's gonna be building from source. Um, usually it'll be pretty good about getting all the dependencies and things like that, but uh, you know, every once in a while it'll blow up. Um, so why would you wanna go do this? Uh, well, if you go compile from source, it's going to be generally more efficient, more more optimized for your processors uh, than it would be if you just downloaded a binary uh, application. Um, additionally, if you were to go do something like port this over to maybe an ARM processor, uh, BSDs tend to be a little bit better at that. I don't want to generalize. Uh, historically, they've been better at that. Linux is, is much more portable these days than it used to be back in the back in the day. But if you wanted to go move this over to like an ARM uh, processor, for example, you could get the very minimal OS, uh, you know, port it over. And then with the ports, you can build everything from source to begin with. So you don't need to worry about, do I have binaries available for ARM? You don't worry about it. You just go build it, right? And we have this nice sort of automated build process. Um, but it's kind of nice that you can actually go see this sort of blow up <laughs> uh, because that is that is one of the downsides of it um, is that you are going to have to sort of play around with this and, and sort of get things, you know, working and, and figured out. But I think that's that's uh, that's a nice little healthy challenge uh, for folks that, especially who are a little bit newer to this, um, it is handy uh, to know how to troubleshoot, you know, compiling software from source. It kind of still comes up, uh, maybe not as often as, as one would would think, and on you know uh, these days, but it it does still come up occasionally. So anyway, if you found this uh, this video interesting or informative. Uh, if you'd like to go see content like this in the, the future, where not only do we talk about career and, and technology tips and things that you might be interested in, uh, we also kind of walk through uh, instructional kind of, uh, you know, tutorials on little pieces such as this. I'm probably going to have a few more FreeBSD things uh, just to, to kind of get you guys maybe interested in that. Um, click, uh, click down below. There's a little subscribe button. You can go click on that. And... Uh, you get to see more videos uh, from me in the future, which uh, hopefully will be good. Otherwise, you know, don't hit the subscribe button because that's what it's going to do. It's just going to get you more videos like this uh, and, you know, free content from somebody who, uh, not, to, uh, not to sound obnoxious, people pay a lot of money <laughs> to come to their, their, their you know, uh, their offices and teach classes. So uh, if you'd like to get more stuff like this in the future, Click the, uh, click the subscribe button and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. So have a great rest of your week uh, and take care of yourself.